in this session i am going to uh, discuss with you some of the very basic uh, approaches in molecular biology uh, which has contributed immensely to our understanding about about the molecular basis of uh, various processes uh, occurring in a living cell so what is molecular biology basically so it is the branch of uh, biology which deals with the molecular basis of biological activity whether it is gene activity or the protein activity in terms of uh, uh, their participation in biochemical processes through enzymes you know and uh, this field actually overlaps with other two basic uh, areas that is uh, chemistry and particularly genetics and biochemistry basically because in cell, inside the cell whatever goes on is uh, the chemical reactions and since they are happening in a biological system we uh, call them as biochemical reactions which are catalyzed by enzymes and these enzymes in turn are caused by uh, by the genes so that's how whatever goes on within the cell is controlled by genes you know so that's how the genetics or the genes activity is directly related with uh, the biochemical activity of the cell and uh, basically this deals with our uh, understanding for interactions between three macromolecules that is dna rna and protein biosynthesis so molecular biology deals with these three macromolecular interactions their synthesis and their actions okay so uh, i am going to focus on uh, some of the approaches uh, and uh, very briefly the the technical uh, the technology part of these approaches to make you understand that how these basic uh, techniques work what how they are done and what they are capable of uh, delivering in terms of uh, knowledge output okay so in this the first uh, breakthrough came uh, with the possibilities of uh, gene cloning you know. now what is this gene cloning referred to wherein we take a dna piece of dna a fragment of dna and clone clone it into a vector and then this vector what we call recombined vector uh, is pushed into a host cell where it reproduces you know where this recombinant dna molecule makes multiple copies of the original uh, fragment of dna so what it does is from one piece of dna you can make multiple copies of the same dna in a bacterial cell and this fragment of dna can be taken from any source today it can be a plant piece of dna it can be animal a piece of dna which can be cloned into a bacterial cell and then there this piece of dna is uh, uh, multiplied in many folds and uh, you can each time if you require this piece of dna uh, you can you need not go to the uh, to the uh, to the source that is the animal or plant to to isolate this piece of dna but you can take out from this bacterial cell where it is being cloned as recombinant dna 
Now, how it is done, actually, if you look at, you know, so you have the bacterial cell. And as you know, in bacterial cell, the genetic material lies in two places. One in the bacterial chromosome, which is which has the uh, majority of the genes. And then you have extra chromosomal uh, genetic material in the form of plasmids. And uh, these plasmids are capable of, you know, uh, uh, accommodating the foreign piece of DNA here. You know, and this technology was developed when the restriction enzyme analysis was done. I mean, the, the discoveries related to enzymes which can cut the piece of DNA uh, uh, by cutting it into a specific site and then rejoining this uh, piece of DNA by, with the help of another enzyme we call lipase. You know, so these kind of uh, cutting and pasting possibilities were developed. Now in this, when we talk about cloning, what is done is you take, uh, if this is the uh, host cell from where you want to take a piece of DNA or in turn uh, where the gene of interest lies, okay, so you can isolate this piece of DNA here and put it into this plasmid, you know, so this is black portion is the gene of interest which has been pushed into this plasmid, you know, and this is the recombinant plasmid because here it contains the piece of DNA. And then this plasmid is introduced back into the host cell. And when this host cell multiplies, this plasmid also multiplies and you have, uh, you can generate a large amount of uh, uh, this piece of DNA, you know, and this can be used for studying variety of things. You know. So this was the uh, very first um, molecular biological approach where it could be possible to uh, isolate the uh, piece of DNA that is the gene, gene of interest from any source, from animal, plant, bacteria, you know, and viruses, and this can be cloned into this vehicle we call as a cloning vehicle or cloning vector, and uh, introduced back into the bacterial cell, where it can, the multiple copies of the same piece of DNA can be generated. Now, it has plenty of applications. This approach, if you see, you know, this plasmid DNA can be uh, isolated, purified and it can be differently studied. You can sequence the, 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 the piece of DNA which you have, uh, you have introduced here. You can do sequencing of it and study the gene structure and all other things. And then you can, you can use this to genetically modify plants and animals. Okay, and also you can use this recombinant plasmid having gene of interest to modify uh, bacterial systems to which can be used for cleaning the toxic uh, waste material. So it opened a variety of uh, uh, possibilities uh, to study this macromolecule and also to apply. And also this made the backbone for biotechnology. And then if you can express this piece of uh, DNA or the foreign gene into the bacterial cell, it is possible now. If you hook it with appropriate promoter and terminator, this piece of DNA can express itself and make protein and these proteins can be purified and studied for their in vitro functions, what these proteins are, are capable of doing biochemically in vitro and then in vivo also you can study. These, uh, the functions of these proteins. So this approach actually uh, lays down the basis of uh, biotechnology or genetic engineering. Okay, now technique wise, this is, uh, this is uh, fairly well known techniques in molecular biology. I'm not going into the details, but if you understand that what this cloning is, what is done in this, and what it is capable of in terms of uh, uh, its application. So you can clone a gene from any source, uh, which can be 
is used for modifying plants, animals, microbes for different application purposes. And if the gene of interest, which has been cloned into bacterial plasma, expresses itself in bacterial cell, this protein can be purified now that things are available, and then this protein can be used can be can be uh, used for uh, determining their functions in vitro and also later on in vivo. Okay, so after this, you know, the <clears throat> major uh, uh, molecular biological techniques which came to study the three macromolecules like DNA, RNA, and proteins are based on um, hybridization and also the gel electrophoresis technique, which is capable of uh, separating these macromolecules based on their electrical charge and molecular mass, you know, and these techniques made the basis of uh, actually molecular biology. Because using these basic techniques, a lot of information was generated um, uh, for, um, for um, uh, isolating specific genes from the source, and then how this gene expresses in terms of making transcripts, and then uh, what kind of protein it makes. You know? So these kind of questions were answered using the basic uh, um, a basic uh, molecular biology technique like electrophoresis and the blotting techniques. I will uh, touch upon these approaches uh, one by one. So, as I mentioned, what happens in the electrophoresis? Uh, basically, here you can separate uh, DNA, RNA, and proteins uh, based on their uh, uh, or using electrical field, you know. They are subjected to electrical field, and then when they move, you know, they get separated based on their uh, electrical charge and their ability to move through a gradient of electricity, you know. Uh, and uh, different media have been used for separating these macromolecules. For example, DNA, for DNA and RNA, we use agarose, so that is called agarose gel electrophoresis. And uh, proteins are uh, separated on SDS group gel. Okay, so uh, so uh, the proteins are separated based on, on their size. Uh, in these one D uh, or one dimensional uh, electrophoresis, and uh, when we separate them on uh, two dimensional gel electrophoresis, the separation is done based on their size and the electrical charge. So, uh, so uh, we can um, we can uh, I mean we we do first separation in the uh, one-dimensional electrophoresis, and then the single band is subjected to another um, uh, round of electrophoresis. Uh, then the uh, the proteins get separated based on their electrical charge, you know, because the molecular mass when this gets separated in one uh, molecular mass, there can be many proteins which co-move or move together as one single band. And when this further gets separated, you can see the array of proteins getting separated in the second dimensional electrophoresis um, based on their electrical charge. Okay, so it is now possible to dissect these proteins uh, to the uh, level of one protein, you know, and this then protein can is 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 uh, further analyzed using different techniques of uh, uh, protein characterizations. And DNA and RNA is run in uh, one-dimensional agarose gel electrophoresis, where where they get uh, separated based on their electrical charge. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the basic uh, uh, approach in gel electrophoresis. Uh, Basically, to separate in a mass of uh, if you take uh, say say uh, DNA, uh, which has been digested with different uh, with restriction enzyme, uh, then it gets uh, broken into small pieces, and when you run it on a gel, uh, then all these fragments, based on the electrical uh, uh, charge, they get separated. You know, 
and so on, so on. And, uh, <clears throat> and then they are further uh, probed using specific uh, uh, probes. That is what is referred in the hybridization techniques. So basically, you, in the first step, you separate these macromolecules like DNA, RNA, and protein using gel electrophoresis approach. And then further uh, try to ask questions. Uh, and uh, those questions are answered using hybridization technique. Now, what is this hybridization technique? Here, when you take uh, two fragments of a single-stranded homologous DNA molecule, it can hybridize through hydrogen bonding, you know, uh, from, uh, by, through hydrogen formation, bonding formation or base pairing. Okay, for example, if you look at this double stranded DNA, you know, uh, when you when you denature it, both the strands get separated, and when you when you use a radio level probe, that is uh, DNA which is single stranded, and bring down the temperature where this radio level DNA is capable of. Uh, hybridizing with this single strand and the opposite single strand. And that's how when this radio level um, DNA hybridizes with the native DNA, you know, so this double stranded DNA can be tracked, you know, so uh, by using uh, autoradiography or uh, this can be visualized on uh, using autoradiograms. Now, not only DNA, you can also uh, use this technique of hybridization uh, to a RNA molecule, you know. So uh, you can take RNA and use the DNA probe, which hybridizes because RNA is a single stranded and DNA is double stranded, but get DNA, once to get DNA, it becomes single stranded and it is capable of hybridizing with RNA molecule. So we have two basic approach. One is southern blot and another is uh, northern blot. The southern blot deals with DNA blotting and northern uh, hybridization deals with blotting of RNA molecule. Okay, and, and the purpose here is to, if you have the specific piece of DNA in your hand and asking a question that whether this, uh, this gene homologues are present in the experimental conditions or not, then you take the DNA or RNA from here and then ask the question, uh, uh, I mean, whether this, uh, this uh, um, the specific gene which you're looking for, whether it is there, present there or not. So you use this as a probe and hybridize uh, uh, the DNA or RNA, you know. So, <clears throat> Uh, the southern blot very specifically, for example, if we see in this, what happens in southern blot, you take the three scenarios and then uh, do the restriction enzyme analysis, which breaks the DNA into small pieces, you know, like this, and run it on aggregate gel. So when you run it on aggregate gel, you know, it gets uh, separated like this, you know, when you view it under UV light. So you can see that all the three samples get separated based on their molecular, I mean, based on their charge. And then from here, from gel, it is taken onto, onto the nitrocellulose membrane, you know, and then, uh, uh, and then it is probed with the specific DNA probe to find out whether this probe is present in these samples or not. And this probe is the specific gene, which is radio labeled, you know. So wherever the, 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 the DNA, which has these sequences, it gets hybridized here, you know. And when, after washing this membrane, you know, after hybridization, it is subjected to washing. And then it is exposed to X-ray film, where uh, after autoradiogram, you have a picture like this. You know, from so many bands, you see only one, two, three bands hybridizing with 
with the specific probe indicating that these fragments of uh, DNA in, from the sample has your specific uh, gene sequence uh, which you are interested in, you know. And similarly in the lane two and lane three, you know, you have extra patch here. You know. So uh, uh, this kind of analysis answers a very specific question. If you have, uh, if you have uh, the, 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 the gene of interest cloned in a classmate, and you are asked you're going to a unknown sample where you don't know whether your uh, gene of interest is there or not, then you do this analysis. And if you see hybridization with your specific probe on a heterodogram uh, signals coming, then it shows that your gene of interest is present in the unknown sample. And if it doesn't hybridize, it shows that um, it is not present, okay? So these kind of questions can be uh, answered by using or have been answered by using this approach. Now, in gene expression, you know, we have, uh, uh, okay, before, so, so another application of Southern hybridization is the colony hybridization. For example, when you clone, when you clone a gene into a plasmid and the plasmid is uh, uh, plasmid is uh, pushed back into the host cell you know and then the host cell is multiplying and now you want to know which bacterial cell has uh, the cloned gene now then for this uh, we have to do this colony hybridization now what is done here is that you take the, the, the cell population, which has been, I mean, the, the cells which have received the recombinant plasma and uh, plate it on a, on a uh, medium. So you can see various colonies coming up, bacterial colonies. Now you want to know that out of these many colonies, which colony has plasma containing the gene of interest? Okay, so what is done is that you take these colonies on a nitrocellulose paper, you know, so all are blotted over this, like this, and then this is probed with this radio level probe, you know, okay, and then this is washed after hybridization and autoradiogram is turned up. So you see, for example, out of these many colonies, on the plate, you are seeing only two colonies showing this specific hybridization. It means that these are the colonies which has the, the plasmid which contains the gene of interest and not the others. So when you, this is the master plate, this one, which you started with, or this one, I mean, right from where the colonies were lifted like this. So when you uh, overlay this plate with this autoradiogram, you can very identify these two, which are, uh, you know, uh, overlapping when you put the plate on the on the autoradiogram. So these two colonies cells from here taken, amplified, and when you amplify vector cells from these two colonies, in the next generation, all the cells of that colony will have these gene of interest. So that's how the cloning is confirmed. Screening is done by using this uh, southern hybridization technique uh, to purify basically and have the culture of bacterial cells wherein all the cells will have the recombinant plasma. Okay, so this is clear cut application of that technique of southern hybridization. Now, the second thing we looked at was the northern blot hybridization. Now, when a gene expresses, you know. It uh, produces RNA, and very specifically, we are interested in mRNA, okay, or total RNA, which will have the mRNA. So, if a gene is expressing itself and making RNA, what is done in this? We take the total RNA, say, from uh, from uh, cells which are not supposed to be expressing that gene, and also RNA from the cells or tissues or organs where it is supposed to be expressing itself, okay? 
So we have two sets of uh, RNA, and then we run it on a chair. Uh, okay, this is the sample RNA, for example. So you run it on a chair like this. They get separated, you know, and then they are taken on the membrane. Okay, and then this membrane is then hybridized by the level probe. Now, level probe is the DNA probe. That that is the very specific uh, gene sequence we are talking about, or the gene whose expression we are trying to see. Okay, so when you take these uh, single stranded probes of uh, the DNA or the gene sequence, which gets single stranded during hybridization because the temperature increases, it it it, it, it denatures, and when the temperature is brought down, you know. Uh, it hybridizes with the single stranded RNA here, okay, which you can see that these green, uh, you know, this is the probe, it gets hybridized with the RNA. And when you, after washing this membrane, uh, take it on autoradiogram, you can see that <clears throat> the presence of this, this picture shows that the transcript of this gene are made in these. In this. So basically, northern hybridization is used for tracking the gene expression at the transcript level, very specifically. Okay, and that's how a lot of information in the data is generated. And when I talk about subsequently uh, the developing technologies and isolating genes, looking at their expression, you I will show you a lot more uh, data on this that how. This northern hybridization has uh, uh, given us a lot of information uh, on gene expression at the transcript level. Okay, now the 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 next step in gene expression is the proteins made. You know, so how the protein made is detected now? It's taking the same protein, same gene, you know, which has been cloned. You have checked it at the transcript level. Now you want to see whether the gene has. It has, uh, is making protein or not. That's where the Western blotting come into um, play, uh, their role, you know. And what is done here, you take the protein sample from control and the test conditions, you run it on a gel, you know, and uh, the, the proteins get separated based on their uh, uh, molecular mass. This is a, a single directional uh, gel electrophoresis, you know. And then um, they, the presence of a specific protein is uh, checked by using a uh, specific antibody for that protein. Okay, so that is actually done by using first the, we uh, has the primary antibody, you know, which goes and binds to the proteins. And then you have the secondary antibody, which is very specific to a, the protein of interest, you know which very specifically interacts with the primary antibody and then you are able to see you know the hybridization patterns like this showing that the, the, the specific protein which one is looking for is present you know uh, so this technique actually uh, helps us in knowing whether the specific protein one is looking for or a specific gene product which one is looking for is is made in the test conditions or not and it is very very specific approach to detect in a specific um, specific uh, uh, protein you know using western analysis western blot analysis okay then and there is uh, another uh, very recent uh, a recent approach which has come is the eastern blotting actually. Uh, this blotting uh, uh, gives us idea about the post-translational modification which a protein undergoes um, in terms of glycosylations, you know, so that can be determined by using eastern blot and also it can also reveal the protein DNA interaction which we call southern western uh, uh, hybridizations or protein RNA interactions and protein protein interactions. Okay, so all the three kind of interactions can be studied by using eastern blood analysis. Okay, because we have proteins in a cell which interacts 
with all the uh, all the three macromolecules like DNA, RNA, and protein. So you have protein DNA interactions, you have protein RNA interactions, and then protein protein interactions. So it now it is possible to uh, it is possible to uh, study these kind of interactions uh, using these uh, this Eastern blood approach um, in vitro. Okay. And then <clears throat> continuing on the hybridization is, is the in vivo localization of, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the genes. Okay, if you want to see in the, in the cell on chromosome where your gene of interest is localized, for that we use uh, in situ hybridization. Now, what is done here? is you have the DNA, this is the, represents the gene of interest. You label it with fluorescent dye, okay, fluorescent dye. And then um, basically what happens when you take the cells and denature, and denature you know, uh, this, uh, the, the, the label fluorescent dye, you know, the, the containing piece of DNA, uh, it hybridizes with the original a piece of DNA, you know, in the cell, and then this whole thing can be visualized under fluorescent microscope. So presence of these kind of signals can be detected through that microscope, and uh, it will tell you that in which chromosome and on chromosome where this piece of uh, that this unknown piece of DNA is localized. You know? So these this approach is very specifically helping us to do in vivo studies of localizations uh, of, uh, of the genes of the genetic material that where it is uh, localized, okay? PCR's uh, polymerase chain reaction uh, technique is very, very powerful uh, techniques uh, and being used in today's uh, reference. So you can, you can very, and you know what happens here, you have the template DNA, and uh, you can, if you know the sequence of the gene, you can design very specific primers, uh, which are 18 base pairs, 220 base pairs, 21 base pairs, you know, very specific. And when you use these primers and carry out the uh, PCR reaction, you know, uh, this piece of DNA, if it is present in the template DNA, gets amplified many, many fold, thousands of folds, and then this piece of uh, this can be resolved on agarose child and then that piece of uh, uh, DNA which is uh, which is getting separated um, can be cloned into the vector cells and then you can sequence and determine that yes this is the piece of DNA which you have amplified and you are interested in that by matching the sequence with the known sequence in, in, from where the primers have been have been um, uh, designed, you know. So this is a very powerful technique to uh, to to you know, to take out genes of interest where the gene sequence is already known. So you you have to. It's a single step reaction to amplify uh, the gene of interest from the genomic DNA. You know, you don't have to do anything other than isolating DNA, which is simple, and subjecting this DNA to PCR reaction. Uh, running it on gel and then taking out the DNA from the gross gel and cloning it into the plasmid and, and, and then amplifying it. So, so that is one application which is being done. And then, <clears throat> and then uh, you can, while amplifying, you can do many things, you know. You can introduce the restriction sites which helps in cloning subsequent. And also, if you want to generate very specific uh, mutations in the gene, that also is possible by, uh, by, by designing these primers. So you can introduce mutations, you can introduce restriction sites which help in cloning. You know. Now, this approach also has been uh, subjected to uh, looking at RNA molecule, you know, that is, uh, you have the RNA and it is possible now to convert it into cDNA by reverse transcriptase, you know. So, and then it becomes 
the DNA template. And if you have the specific primers of this, you can do a PCR reaction and see whether your RNA, your, 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 the RNA of your specific genes are present in that pool of RNA or not. So this approach what we call uh, RT-PCR, which can detect uh, a specific gene product uh, in the pool of, uh, in, 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 in a cell. And, and further modification is the real-time RT-PCR or qPCR. Here, you know, not only you can determine the presence of uh, specific transcript, but also you can quantify that how much transcripts are present in the sample. That's the beauty. So you can you can determine that uh, uh, that how many copies of uh, transcript uh, transcripts are made, how much expression in the baser level scenario, and how much is uh, the expression of the gene in a test condition. So that is the beauty of real time PCR. So basic PCR technique has been used uh, differently or variously for different purposes, you know, uh, and then. You have a microarray. Now, microarray system is uh, again to look at the expression of genes or the global expression of genes uh, in a test condition. You know, so far by using northern hybridization or RT PCR, you can look at only single gene uh, expression profiles. But in microarray, you can look at thousands of the gene in one go through making the chips you know so you have uh, you can make the, uh, the the chip containing thousands of uh, um, the, 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 the gene sequences it can be oligo based chips it can be uh, cdna based chips you know so <clears throat> so if for example in human uh, if we know today 20,000 genes or uh, 25,000 genes, so so there is a chip available containing all the 20, 25,000 genes. Now, if you want to study that in a cancer cell, how many of these genes are expressing or not expressing, what is their expression profile? Now, you take uh, um, control cells, normal cells, and the cancer cells, and radio level them. Here, the Labeling is the fluorescent dyes, you know, uh, like this, for example, you have, say, for example, this is what I was trying to say, that you have an array where you have 24,000 human genes, you know, put on a, on a particular, uh, on a single chip, actually. So, uh, and the probe is labeled with uh, the green dye and, uh, and uh, red dye, you know. <coughs> So red indicates the increase of expression and yellow is the equal expression and green is the reduced expression, you know. So if you look at the uh, microarray, so you can know, uh, so this means it is, it is showing the increased expression in cancer cell, for example, um, as compared to normal cell. And the green here represents the reduced expression of this gene and yellow means uh, uh, and, and then um, yellow means the equal expression. So uh, you can have in one go the, the scenario about 24,000 genes and their expression file in uh, different uh, disease conditions or developmental state conditions. I mean, this has helped. So it can, it can, uh, you, from here, you can, for example, if you want to study this. Now, since you know the sequence, you also know the gene, what it is. And you, now what you have information, you have, uh, you have uh, derived that this gene is overexpressing in cancer cell. Now, wherever a gene is the, uh, showing differential expression in uh, versus the controlled normal cell and the cancer cell, it means this overexpression may be involved in uh, some way in changing the phenotype of the cell from normal cell to cancer cell. You know? So like that, that's the basis. So this approach has resulted in to identify a large number of genes in, and they have different applications. For example, gene discovery is the 
uh, with Dr. Juan, you know, uh, which has been, uh, which has been, um, where it has been used uh, predominantly. Uh, uh, you can identify genes um, which are which are overexpressing, underexpressing, uh, under uh, specific conditions. You know? uh, in disease diagnosis, uh, this uh, this analysis has had drug discoveries. It has had and also in toxicology and researches. So, in the end, or to conclude, I have tried to um, discuss with you some of the experimental approaches. I have not gone into the technique, how it is done, but then what a technique is, what basically is done, and what are the applications of that, you know. Uh, but, but, with the objective that I will be talking about, or, or I, will be, I will be showing you data where these techniques have been used, you know, and actual application of these techniques we will see when I talk about very specific scenarios as we go along through this, uh, this, through this course. Okay, so thank you very much. And, uh, and, uh, um, we'll uh, 